here's what works on YouTube. At the beginning, in the first 10, 15, 20 seconds, hook your viewer. In other words, uh, don't save the best part until last with the surprise ending. You, 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 you've got to get the viewer engaged in the first 10, 15, 20 seconds when frankly, 50% of your viewers are going to start watching your video and then quit within 20 seconds. Hi, I'm Nishan Garg with What Market Wants. My guest for today is an award-winning video marketing expert. People refer to him as a YouTube guru. He is a frequent speaker at industry trade shows. He is an instructor at Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. He's the author of YouTube and Video Marketing, an hour a day, and a contributor to several marketing publications online. Let's welcome Greg Jabo. Hi. Hi, Dishat. How are you? I'm good. So, could you tell me how was your journey from Edinburgh to Boston? I believe you graduated from there. I went to the University of Edinburgh, and um, that was when I learned that I did not speak English. I spoke American. <laughs> so, how and, is that different? How is that different? Please uh, tell me. Well, I, I you know, the, the simple explanation is if you want a cookie, you ask for a biscuit. Ah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, uh, that, and that's, that's the easy explanation. There are, are far more complex ones, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Before we get deep into today's topic, tell me, do you have a YouTube channel? Um, I believe I do, although it is only used uh, to curate content that I really, really like. So most of the work that I do is for uh, clients. And so most of the work that I've done is on their channels. But uh, every now and then I see something that is just knocks my socks off. And so I uh, like it and, and share it on uh, my channel. But I think there's only one original video that I uploaded there. A long time ago, as part of an April Fool's plan, uh, uh, joke. April Fool's joke, and now, yeah. uh, when when was that? Oh, it was it was for a uh, uh, course that I was teaching at Rutgers, and so I'm going to say maybe ten years ago. Ten years ago, okay. So, don't you get this question from clients that why are you not active on YouTube? Um, if I were, then I would be competing with my clients, and. <laughs> And that's okay I, by me, but not the client. <laughs> Super. Well, I'm going to use that <laughs> because <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I should uh, not be saying this, but I'm not too active on social media myself. And I get that a lot that being a marketer, why are you not active on social media? I, I am active, quote, on other platforms, like, uh, for example, Pinterest. But what I'm doing on Pinterest is a series of experiments. So I'm trying things to see what gets repinned. And so if somebody were to come look at my pin board, it was like, this has no common theme whatsoever. And the answer, of course not. It's an experiment. So uh, a again, um, I, I try to do my best work for uh, paying clients. Um, and then I do uh, weird stuff for myself and see what works. I love and how you added paying clients, paying. Uh, well, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, if something's going to fail, I can learn from it, but it better fail on my own uh, channel or site or wherever, um, uh, pin board. Um, then nobody gets mad at me. That's fair. Let's talk about video marketing. What is so different about this form of digital media in comparison? Um, it's different partly because it's an orphan. So there are a whole lot of people who think they do social media marketing, but when you ask them to say, okay, well, list the social media that you market on, they'll start with uh, Facebook and then they'll add um, Instagram and, oh, wait, 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 I'm, I'm also doing TikTok. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, uh, Facebook discovered that uh, there was a video first world about five years ago and they made a huge pivot. Um, 
just yesterday, Instagram announced it's not a photo sharing app anymore. They're focused on video and shopping. And anybody who's looked at TikTok, it's like, excuse me, I think all they have there is video. And so for whatever set of strange reasons, somehow or other, YouTube has been defined out of the social media category, and it's over there, oh, I don't know, in the video category. It's so of me. Yeah. Everybody else is doing video. They're all doing <laughs> video because it worked on YouTube. <laughs> so is it sort of intimidating to actually post on YouTube in comparison to Instagram? Um, it is not. Partly because Instagram, uh, which part of Instagram are we talking about? The feed, reels, um, oh, IGTV, oh, 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 wait, <laughs> there are other options. And so um, stories. Stories. It, it, yeah, it's like, and, and so, and so um, Instagram has become a uh, hyper complex, <laughs> almost, almost as complex as uh, YouTube. Um, and so in some in some respects, yeah, it's not a simple world anymore. So true. It started as a photo sharing platform and now look at it. So tell me there's so many unnoticed videos out there. What do you think they're doing wrong? A lot. And if it were easy, then everybody would be a multimillionaire and uh, we would each have our own private island and uh, we, we might video chat with each other. But um, there are a couple fundamentals that uh, people keep doing wrong again and again and again. So I guess I'll start there. One of the first things that people forget, particularly on YouTube, is that um, it is a unique platform and where, let's say, uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram and TikTok all use uh, feeds for people to discover the next new video. In YouTube, um, there are several options, one of which is called search. Oh, my Lord, you can do a search in YouTube? Yeah, right. Yeah. And um, it, it, in addition, people um, can discover new videos on their uh, homepage. Um, in, in YouTube, there's this funny thing. Uh, after you've watched a video, YouTube will make suggestions on what you might want to watch next. and Oh my gosh, in, you know, in the past year, YouTube has uh, rolled out something called shorts. They started in India. And the reason they started in India, by the by, is because India is their largest market with more than 265 million monthly users. Crazy. And so crazy is right. It's huge. And so they, they started off uh, this, this new format that is either 15 seconds or up to 60 seconds long. And there's now a new way to discover those on what is called a shorts shelf in your um, you know, homepage uh, for your channel. So, so uh, just as Instagram has gotten more complex, getting your video discovered is the first step to success. Because if nobody discovers it, um, yeah, nothing good happens after that. And there are at least four, maybe five, if, if, if you count trending videos, uh, ways that people uh, discover it. And if you haven't learned that and you don't know what to do to get your video discovered, you know, then you're, you're an amateur, you, you know, God bless you. Good luck. Um, <laughs> So guys, I need to make an announcement. Greg has accepted the offer of marketing this particular video. If I am not getting any sort of <laughs> likes, you know who to blame. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. blame the instructor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> classic, classic. My, my teacher didn't teach me the right stuff. <laughs> so tell me, in your view, what is so special about video as a media format in comparison to images and text? Why does video work better? Nishant. It's all about storytelling. That's, okay. that, that plays to your strength, right? So um, one of the things that video does is uh, instead of informing you like a post can or uh, catching your eye uh, the way uh, a photo can, it can tell a story. 
And I've actually seen lots of videos that tell really great stories. And interestingly enough, I did a blog post a couple of years ago on some of the best storytelling was being done in India. And it was being done uh, by brands like Hyundai. And it was being uh, done uh, uh, to promote um, services. It, 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 was, it was an amazing uh, sort of rediscovery where everybody in the United States, unfortunately, um, got warped by watching too much television. And so they think everything ought to be a variation on a 15-second TV commercial. Um, storytelling um, is pretty hard in a 15-second constraint. It's actually still pretty hard in a one-minute constraint. But uh, in three, four, five, six, seven, up to 20 minutes, you can tell a pretty compelling story. And guess what? Uh, YouTube video, um, that's its sweet spot. It loves anything that's somewhere between, oh, four and a half and 20 minutes long. Uh, that's, that's what it likes, partly because for YouTube, that enables them to run multiple ads in that long content. And, you know, YouTube is all about uh, tr trying to make a little money both for the content creator and itself and um boy last time they announced anything i think they were making three billion dollars just in the first quarter of uh 2021 um and so there's a lot of money being made and being shared with with content creators and uh, yeah, longer, longer form video is uh, how YouTube is doing that. I truly believe that video is like the second best thing to a real life interaction. In comparison to an image or text, it just engages more of your senses. You are watching, you are listening, you are thinking at the same time. And probably in the time we are living in right now, in the era of social distancing, and when we are not moving out of our houses much, Video could be the first best thing right now. Well, it, it, in a lot of places it is, uh, and you're and you're right. Um, it turns out that when a lot of places went into lockdown, uh, there was a uh, boost in video viewing. What has been amazing to watch, though, is uh, even in parts of the world, uh, like the part I'm in uh, in the United States, where we have a fairly high percentage of people who are now have both their shots and and a lot of the restrictions are being uh, lifted so that we can go out to restaurants again or, uh, you know, uh, go to baseball games. Now, I have to translate baseball is sort of like cricket, only uh, it's different because we only have one home base, not two wickets. Yeah. But anyway, we can get out and about again. So uh, it, it turns out even after people started getting out and about again, guess what? They're viewing has stayed high. And so what, what um, the, the new data is showing is that people are now watching more and more video because they are watching it on more and more screens. So it used to be a desktop experience. Yeah. Then it became a desktop and mobile experience. And the fastest growing platform, at least in the United States, is now connected TV. Connected TV, okay. I yeah. So, well, YouTube TV enables you to, instead of watching a cable TV show, you can watch oh, YouTube. Right, right, right. Just like Netflix and all those other platforms. Exactly. As, as a matter of fact, uh, YouTube uh, gets so oh, something like five times more uh, visitors a month on connected TV than Netflix does. Crazy. Crazy. But still, Netflix is more in the limelight. I don't see this data popping up anywhere. It's, it's huge. Yeah, nobody nobody really uh, comes close to those two. Those are the YouTube and Netflix are the are, are the big ones. In uh, and, and interestingly enough, only advertising is available on YouTube. You, you still don't advertise on Netflix. Right. So independent creators versus big production houses, who do you think has an edge? Uh, when it comes to video marketing, video creation, independent creators, independent creators. And that's the lesson that YouTube has taught all of us. If it were all the big guys, the big houses, 
then you would have about five or six really big channels on YouTube and everyone else would be an amateur. Uh, mm -hmm. If if you actually look at it, there are um, hundreds of thousands. As a matter of fact, there's more than 8 million channels on YouTube. But there are hundreds of thousands which are getting uh, over a million views a month. So um, one of the things that that's teaching us is that if you've got a uh, unique concept and you implement it well, and you basically engage an audience, you can go from zero to 60 in, you know, under a year. One of the examples of that last year was uh, John Krasinski, who created a brand new channel called uh, Some Good News, because heaven knows we all needed some good news in the middle of the pandemic. And his little channel took off overnight. And you know, ended up with Viacom uh, off, offering big money to acquire this little startup channel that uh, didn't exist the year earlier. So, so independent wow. creators, creativity is the new competitive ground, and you know, come up with a good concept, and and you know, that's that's how anybody can make it to the top. So why do you think they have an upper hand uh, in comparison to a big production house? Uh, partly because the big production house is risk adverse. Um, they uh, want formulas so they can create predictable hits again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And, again. and it gets a little tiring, you know, and um, the independent is more tied to what are the audience like the last time I created content? Hmm, what can I learn from that? What new features have they just rolled out? Let's go try this. And um, it turns out, particularly with 8 million channels experimenting to see what works, several hundred thousand of them are, are, are going to bubble to the top. And um, the big guys, by and large, are going to play catch up and uh, they're going to be in the second tier. So apart from YouTube, what? Other platform do you think matters when, when it comes to video marketing specifically? TikTok. TikTok. In, TikTok. in India, it's banned. So uh, any other platforms? Um, well, the third one that everyone keeps talking about is Instagram. Um, I think Instagram is going through its own identity crisis right now and hasn't quite figured out what it is. I mean, one of the things that they announced yesterday, aside from we're not a photo sharing app anymore is um we, we we may actually become a shopping channel <laughs> and, and it's like okay well write me when you get work <laughs> but I, I i heard about that that's crazy they're trying to integrate e-commerce now it just gets too confusing after a point of time i mean well... i <laughs> Simplicity I, I, is like the name I, of the game at times. I don't know why. I, I, this is... I, I believe they have a simple goal, make money. But the problem is, you know, excuse me, uh, there are a lot of different ways to do it. How are you doing it? And why should I come to the Instagram page that I've got to look at what? You making money? I don't think that's what I want to watch. Um, so, so again, um, uh, it's Instagram is, I guess, the third player in my trifecta, but boy, I, I'd focus on uh, YouTube and, and TikTok. Okay, so to, to give us three tips for you know for any creator to step up their YouTube game. What are your top three tips? Oh, well, it starts with the content. It really, really has to start with the content. Um, figure out what your story is. And then here's what works on YouTube. At the beginning, in the first 10, 15, 20 seconds, hook your viewer. In other words, uh, don't save the best part until last with the surprise ending. You, 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 you've got to get the viewer engaged in the first 10, 15, 20 seconds when, frankly, 50% of your viewers are going to start watching your video and then quit within 20 seconds because you haven't 
intrigued them. You haven't hooked them. You haven't told them there's a there's a really good story coming. But, you know, let me start it off strong so that I've got your interest. Then you need to maintain that interest. And you need to maintain that interest over whatever time it takes for you to tell your story. And don't worry about your story having ups and downs. That's good storytelling. And so after the series of ups and downs, then the third thing that you want to do is make sure that when you're ending your story, one of the things YouTube allows you to do is add what is called an end screen at, at the tail end of your video. And in that end screen, let the viewer know if you like the story, if you like this video, here's what you can do next. And among the things that you can tell them about is, I've got another video, you might want to watch that. Or I, you may want to subscribe to my channel and not miss any of the videos that I'm publishing um, uh, in the future. Or you know, sometimes you may want to take them uh, off your site and say, you know, if you want, go to my Facebook page or, or my website or wherever it is you want to take them that is off of YouTube. Uh, but again, give them something to do next. So that's a nice three-part series. You know, hook them in the first 20 seconds, tell a heck of a story, keep their attention. And at the end, ask them to do something. And there you got it. Superb, superb. A call to action basically in the end. Yes. So you were talking about the video length earlier, 15 to 20 minutes being the sweet spot for YouTube since it gets more room to advertise. So does that mean a longer video is better in YouTube's eyes? Uh, no, if you've got a long, boring video, you've got a long, boring video. So uh, it, length by itself doesn't um, make the video better. So the person who basically taught the world this lesson is a makeup artist actually based in Boston named Michelle Fon. And Michelle Fon was creating videos to show you makeup tips. If you want to have a look that makes you look like Lady Gaga, well, then here's how you do the eyebrows. Here's how you do the eyeliner. Here's maybe a platinum wig that you might want to want, whatever. And one of the things that Michelle ran into is in the old days, YouTube used to have what was called a 10 minute limit. And um, they did this basically to try to avoid people from making copies of TV shows and uploading them. And they wanted to avoid any uh, copyright lawsuits. So they made an artificial uh, limit that says no video can be longer than 10 minutes. Well, Michelle said, I can't put my makeup on in 10 minutes. And oh, by the way, I've got millions of followers who are looking for me for my next makeup tip. And YouTube, realizing that hmm, she's got a point, ended up, first of all, to take a halfway step and, and, and raising the limit to 15 minutes. And then basically saying, look, if you're a channel in good standing and you don't have any copyright violations against you, then if you want to make it 12 hours long, make it 12 hours long. But what people have discovered is nobody wants to watch a 12 hour long video either, unless and there are exceptions, you're doing something like, oh, the royal wedding over in the UK, which, you know, held people's attention for, I think, 40 minutes. Or I've seen some videos from NASA where, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, taking the rover around on Mars. And, you know, for whatever it's worth, people are, are willing to watch that for um, uh, longer than 40 minutes. But by and large, um, uh, the sweet spot seems to be somewhere between four and a half minutes to 20 minutes. That seems to be the attention span, the storytelling limit. Now, it can change over time. It can certainly change depending on your content. Um, but, you know, uh, if, if, if you think you had to keep it short because short videos are, are uh, the way to go, right? Oh, then let me give you this hint. Even TikTok, which currently has a limit of one minute long videos, is experimenting with three minute long videos. Yeah. So people are learning 
that, you know, sometimes it takes a little more than a few seconds to tell a good story. So tell me, what is that popular video marketing advice that you don't agree with? Oh, keep it short. The, 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 the answer is, um, okay, based on what? Um, you know, you stuck your finger up in the air, tried to measure the um, direction of the wind and said, oh, short videos are trendy. Um, and, and the answer is, okay, show me the data. And I've actually done the data in India on YouTube shorts versus regular YouTube videos. And it turns out uh, shorts have gone from nowhere to uh, becoming very popular uh, in the last year. Okay, got it. The vast majority of the videos that are still getting the most views and the most engagement aren't shorts. They are regular videos. So shorts is an interesting alternative. And depending on what the content is that you, you have, maybe short is the right thing for you. But um, the advice I'm giving clients these days is use a short the same way Hollywood might use a movie trailer. You know, tease why somebody may want to come watch your long form video uh, in a short form video. Um, But eventually the money is going to be made watching the long form video. So true. So true. So there's always this advice about how frequent you should post. So is there a formula for that as well? Uh, There is. uh, The the formula, unfortunately, is daily. And uh, the people who give that advice um, must have a a large team of um, uh, very, um, I don't know, buff uh, talent because producing a video every day uh, can lead to burnout pretty quick. So um, I think the right answer is um, find a pace that is sustainable. And if that pace for you is once a week, that's fine. If that pace for you is once a day, that's, that's fine too, uh, as long as you can keep it up. And now YouTube does allow you to, oh, let's say, take a vacation for a couple months and then come back and, and, and start uploading again without any penalty. But uh, by and large, um, more and more uh, of the industry and the platforms are discovering that if you burn out your creators in, I don't know, the next 18 months, you know, you've just lost a creator. Uh, so um, find a sustainable pace. So basically set an expectation for the audience and meet that expectation every time. Right. Cool. So you have worked with so many companies over the years. There's one company I'm particularly interested in, Southwest Airlines. How was your experience of working with them? It was so refreshing. And part of what made it refreshing is the corporate culture at Southwest Airlines is refreshing. Now, They haven't forgotten their roots. They started off with uh, three guys in a uh, lounge at an airport uh, coming up with a business plan on the back of a napkin, a cocktail napkin. And um, one of the key things that they started doing to get people to uh, think about flying on this little airline that nobody had ever heard of before was they made sure that instead of giving people pretzels, like every other airline did, they gave them a bag of nuts. In fact, the uh, autobiography of the uh, founder or one of the three co-founders of the company, Herb Kelleher, uh, is entitled Nuts because people thought what he was doing was crazy, blah, 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 but it took off. Now, they've incorporated that into their corporate culture. So they take risks. Unlike most big organizations that are all about, let's try to maintain the same way we did it, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Oh, my Lord, before the Internet even came along, you can't do that anymore, guys. That's that's not going to work. Every year, Southwest sets out, let's experiment in a new area we've never experimented in before. And, yeah, we're allowed to fail. And if we fail, well, at least we'll learn some interesting lessons. We won't do that again, but they keep experimenting. And so when you walk in to 
a company like that that is looking for new different ideas that they can test, then all of a sudden, boy, that that is the perfect client. That is, you, you don't run into big companies like that very often. That's, I think, what really sets them apart. Wow. So could you tell me more about the project? What kind of a campaign was it? Uh, well, let me give you the prosaic one, and then let me give you the... <clears throat> the experimental one. Um, the prosaic one was they were going to launch new service to a city they had never flown to before. Okay. So uh, they'd been flying to 59 different cities and they were going to add a 60th city. It was Philadelphia. And they wanted to let people know that, you know, you can now fly our uh, airline from Philadelphia to the following six areas, six other cities in the United States. And the first video that we created, the first you know, announcement that we put up, uh, we used what are called tracking links. Now, one of the things that the Google campaign URL builder tool enables you to do is to create a uh, unique link with uh, extra parameters at the end to allow you to track results. So instead of seeing that you know this came from YouTube, you can tell this came from this video uh, and you put that uh, tracking link in your description. Um, and, and one of the things they were able to track was $87,000 in ticket sales from oh. a video. Wow. wow. And it was like, wait a second, you can't do that, can you? It's like, we just did. Well, how do you know? Well, we use this crazy link that you can't find out anywhere else in the world. You know, so if people clicked on this link, the only place it exists isn't in your TV advertising. It's not on your website, you know, and 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 so we were able to prove that. And then uh, a little while later that same year, uh, we um, decided to announce an airfare sale. So all of a sudden you can fly anywhere in the United States for I think it was $49 one way, which is dead cheap. I mean, you, you don't find prices that low. So again, part of the success story here isn't just the use of media. Uh, uh, we were using media to tell a story, but boy, is that a powerful story to tell. I can fly anywhere in the United States for $49. That's, I have paid more for a taxi. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> So if again, if 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 you've got a client who can give you a story like that to tell, then the whole lot of the success is on the story they're telling. And oh, oh, by the way, uh, you you get to tell it. But uh, we were able to track, get this, one million dollars. Oh wow! In wow. ticket sales. Now we then ran into a skeptic in finance, of course, who said, "How do you know?" I mean, we, we might have sold these tickets anyway without this. And we said, well, interestingly enough, we kept all the people who bought the tickets in a database and we looked and two thirds of them had never flown your airline ever before. Wow. And oh, by the way, they weren't buying one way tickets. They were buying round trips. And oh, by the way, the average person was buying a ticket for two people. So two people were flying round trip and yeah you know uh you give us a good price like this to promote and boy we can put what what we like to call butts in seats we can put a lot of butts in seats if 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 you want to do that but again part of what made this work was the fact that they were willing to try something that not everyone else would that is super interesting. You, in fact, you have also taught me a lesson of how to deal with finance guys when you're dealing with such companies. <laughs> oh, oh, don't get me started on the finance guys. Oh. <laughs> They're generally the most skeptical one on the team. Well, but again, the the term risk adverse. If if you look it up in Wikipedia, you see the CFO next to <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the the photo of your CFO is next to that uh, that listing. 
Oh God. Oh God. Tell us about your book, YouTube and video marketing and R a day. That sounds like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So, what? Well, it, it is part of a series of books in the quote hour a day series. So the hour a day is sort of tacked on. You can do web analytics an hour a day. You can do Facebook an hour a day. You can do, um, you know, Pinterest an hour a day. There's, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it's part of a series. So the hour a day is part of the series. And uh, it actually forced me to think about how to write the book because normally I don't think about, okay, my reader's going to read something for about an hour and I've got to give them something that they can go do that they can begin to see measurable results doing. So it, it, it was sort of a, a tough discipline, but here's, here's my advice to your listeners. The first edition of my book was published in 2009. The second edition was published in November of 2011. That makes it almost 10 years old. Do not, please, do not buy my book. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Because it has really great advice if you have a time machine. And you can go back 10 years and you can apply all these wonderful lessons. But YouTube is not static. It has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. And most, not all, most of the advice in the book is like woefully out of date. So let me tell you the one part of the book that is not woefully out of date. It's chapter one, which is entitled A Short History of YouTube. Now, the history of YouTube has gotten longer, but... What was happening in the early months of YouTube, that's still the same. So that one little opening chapter on the early year and a half of YouTube doesn't have to be updated. But everything else after that, it's like, for example, one of the chapters in there is about what was called YouTube Insights, which was how you used to measure success in YouTube. Well, a month after my second edition was published in November, uh, 2011. In December 2011, YouTube replaced YouTube Insights with YouTube Analytics. Okay. So a whole chapter just flushed down the toilet a month after the book came out. So oh God. <laughs> take, don't buy the book. Do not buy the book. <laughs> Read the blog posts that I'm writing uh, at Search Engine Journal. They're up to date. Superb, superb. There's a tell me what are your favorite business branding and marketing books? Oh, uh, well, there's several classics. So um, uh, one of the ones that I uh, keep by my side and it is like well-thumbed and yellow highlight all over it and pages folded over again and again and again, I go back to it. It is called Diffusion of Innovations. Okay. And and it's by... This is by Professor Everett Rogers, who used to teach at um, uh, Stanford University, uh, and then he retired, and now he's passed away. But one of the things that Rogers teaches about marketing, not so much YouTube, but about marketing, is that uh, too many of us assume what I'm going to call the flat earth society view of the market. We think everybody sees everything at the same time and therefore mass media and mass marketing is the only way to approach anything. And what uh, Rogers does is he comes out of a sociology field and he sees new ideas starting, taking off, and then having a sort of a bell-shaped curve. And if you've ever watched the daily views of a video that let's say has gone viral. It's a bell shaped curve. And so understanding that some people are going to see your video, like it, talk about it to their friends. They're going to go see the video, like it, talk about it to their friends. If you want to understand that process, you got to get out of the mass marketing mentality. And the best book that I've seen that will get you out of that is the fusion of innovations. Very interesting. I'm definitely going to check out this book. If I ever host a stand-up comedy show for marketers, 
you are the first person I'm going to call to be on stage. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your time. It was awesome talking to you. Well, thank you, Nisha, for uh, asking me on your podcast. If you all want to step up your video marketing game, you must check out his content. You will find the links in the description. To get more such great insights from the world of business, branding, and marketing, subscribe, follow What Market Wants on social media, and let me help you unlock your market potential. Take care.